had to make a trip to get some gas. Thought we'd check out the GoPro, get a see what kind of camera angles we could come up with. Just do a little cruise today. See how the old Q50's feeling. It was supposed to rain all day today. That's, well, 6.30, but it stopped raining about 4 o'clock, I would say. So I thought I'd get out and take a little cruise. It was supposed to rain completely uh, through the evening. So I was planning, or we were planning on a pretty miserable, pretty inactive Saturday, but I'm glad to finally get out a little bit. The roads are still damp, obviously, so I can't get into anything too crazy, but at least I can get out for a little drive. favorite overpass here. side roads here in Mexico that we like to hit. Car sounding good today. Culture Studios custom cat bag system. You guys know where to get the parts. I think we're going on like, oh my god, coilovers. 300 people now or so that have it. At least 250. At least 250 people. Which is awesome. Never anticipated that to be quite honest. I'd, I'd love to be able to make it a package deal. A lot of you guys are commenting now uh, lately saying that uh, I should you know, partner with someone to make it a, a real catback system that can be sold to the masses. Trust me, I would love to do that, but Borla, uh, you know, I take them in every every video clip you guys share with me, but they have no interest in responding. Uh, Flowmaster has acknowledged a one person's uh, setup and how it sounded, which was cool. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're big you know, multi-million dollar company, so they're they're not gonna mess around with somebody like me. I'm sure a bunch of them would sell, you know, with their marketing behind it, of course, but, you know, they're not uh, they're not interested in just uh, small guys like, like me, so. But nonetheless, you guys keep installing this catback system, please tag me uh, on Instagram and direct me to YouTube videos if you put clips out there. Uh, the more attention we get on it, the more more of a chance we have at that happening which would be really sick but uh, nonetheless I like to see it anyway and, and definitely like to continue sharing it with the community I mean the, the it, it sounds so good we I mean we can't deny it oh the downshift so oh my god slippery I'm really excited to get this thing up to the mountains finally I wanted to I thought about going this weekend but then there was forecasted major rain for the whole weekend so put the hold on that one uh, but coming up here we got to we got to get up there for sure at least to North Carolina and test those mountains out because um, this setup is exciting but what I'm really pumped to do is get out and do some zero to 60 poles maybe some eighth mile poles I, I want to get to the drag strip too, the eighth mile drag strip outside of Greenville um, because now we got the coil over so our suspension's a little bit stiffer we might be able to transfer some additional torque to the ground off the line uh, but we're also working with 
wheels that are seven pounds lighter each than what I was working with before. And as if you remember, I think we ran a 4.86 or something like that, zero to 60, uh, 4.8 something. Um, and that was with those heavier wheels. Plus the weight we uh, uh, eliminated, uh, getting rid of the factory struts and going with the BC coilovers. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we're, we're dealing with a, an entirely different setup now and I think it's going to perform a lot better, even in a straight line. So that's one thing I'm excited about. I wish we had a, an LSD though, because it's open diff. Sucks. <laughs> I think uh, Caffeine and Octane is next weekend in Atlanta. And then we have Cars and Coffee finally starting up again in Greenville at the Michelin headquarters uh, next month, May. I think May 22nd or May 24th or something like that. Uh, so that's awesome. We haven't had cars and coffee since last, jeez, winter. I don't know when the last one was. January, February of 2020? Crazy. So finally uh, getting cars and coffee back in Greenville. It sounds like. Fingers crossed. Nothing's been confirmed yet, but that's what they're trying to coordinate. If any of you guys are in the area that weekend next next month in May come on down to the Michelin facility on Pelham Road Greenville South Carolina there's always hundreds and hundreds of really awesome cars that show up uh, but the fact that we haven't had a cars and coffee for over a year uh, if the weather is even halfway decent turnout is going to be incredible so uh, I know caffeine and octane is a pretty big deal in Atlanta but cars and coffee in Greenville is insane well, I'm working on a couple of angles to bring some additional, some new uh, type of content to you guys. Um, in addition to searching for a car, I feel like a broken record. Damn, I, I trust me, I'm looking for another car for the channel. Uh, whether I get the driveway expanded in time or not, doesn't matter. I'm buying a car. I just, uh, I found one I'm interested in. Turns out it's five hours away in North Carolina. Uh, just... I'm, I'm not doing that. I mean, if I find a good deal on a car, I'm willing to make a trip a little bit, but you know, one that's questionable, I just, I'm not gonna drive five hours for real. And these guys are wanting so much money for like, seriously, clapped out pieces of crap. I mean, I, I love that line. I, I know what I have, I know what the car is worth. Okay, no, you don't. I guess it's worth whatever anybody's willing to pay for it, but. They, they they list these cars for so much money, eight and $9,000, and then, uh, you know, three, four months later, they're still on there, and they end up selling them for 6000 bucks. So I just, it drives me nuts. Brakes work good, but the road's wet. So let's be careful here. Tractor control off. Slip. prefer this angle this camera angle or do you prefer the head mount I kind of like this I feel a little more free to look around and kind of observe my surroundings a little bit more freely than, than wearing something on my head uh, but I also feel like this angle might be a little bit better I think you can still see what's going on in the, in the controls area but it's not all over the place but let me know let me know in the comments so I talked about a while 
while ago about doing a video that, that uh, discussed how to or how I uh, drive spiritedly using the paddle shifters. I guess now is as good a time of any as, uh, as any as long as my GoPro doesn't die here. But one thing that maybe people don't know or don't really think about is that first of all, if you're driving in the canyons or in the mountains, there's not a lot of activity in the paddle shifters, to be quite honest. You, you're always wanting to keep your car in its power band, right? So uh, with the VQ37, a naturally aspirated engine, it likes the high revs. You really don't feel that, that power, the pull, until you're up over 3,000, 3,500 RPM. So you wanna keep the RPM in that range. So if you're coming you know, out of a corner, out of a tight hairpin turn in second gear, and you're racing to that next turn, the chances that you get to third gear in the mountains, like North Carolina mountains, for example, or even Tail of the Dragon, um, the chances that you get into third gear are pretty slim. I mean, remember, top of, six, top of second gear is 60 miles an hour. Uh, you might do a Tail of the Dragon, there's a couple of stretches, but even still, then it's second to third, and when you come into a corner, you're going back down into second. So, again, it's not a lot of activity, and I've seen, uh, I've seen some people. Tough guy just had to. Sorry. Um, I've seen some people on with YouTube videos uh, in the, the Q50, upshift, downshift, upshift, downshift in the mountains, like back and forth, back and forth. These transmissions are not all that stout, uh, right? If you're abusing it unnecessarily, uh, it's not. It's not going to appreciate it. I'll say that. So be methodical, be systematic. Think about your shifts. Don't go crazy and shift unnecessarily. Again, if you're in the mountains, uh, it, you're going to be second and third gear, second and third gear. If you're in like the canyons of California where you have some pretty long sweeping uh, canyon roads, you might be in third and fourth and get down to second. You guys could see in this little windy country stretch that I was on here, um, third gear is, you know, what I would stay in if I was really going crazy. Uh, I can get up over 65, 70, 80 miles an hour on this road if, if you wanted to. Um, I don't. I'm not going. I'm not going to go that fast. Obviously, it's breaking the law. But if you wanted to, on a road like that with just some uh, slight sweeping curves you're going to be hanging out in third gear. When you come to a tight corner, downshift into second, roll into it, and you're shifting back up into third. And, and that's it. We're not going up and down, up and down. Don't think too hard about it, quite honestly. You just want to keep your RPM up in that, you know, a good mid-range RPM range that this car likes to be in, which is 33,000, 3,500 RPM up to, you know, 6,500. Red line, 7,500. It's always important to keep in mind too when you're doing roll races. Of course, you're not doing this on the street because street racing is illegal. Uh, but there's some uh, drag strips that will have uh, roll race uh, events, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, again, you want to keep make sure your car is in the proper, you know, power region. So you don't want to be doing, you know, you don't want to do a, a 40 roll race in fourth gear or something, right? You want to make sure you're in the proper gear uh, when you're rolling. Uh, 40 roll would be perfect for second gear, gear in the VQ. We'll, we'll try it here on the road uh, just to see. And I shift right at 7,000 RPM, 7,100 RPM as close as I can uh, because you know there's a little bit of a delay in these cars and you just kind of have to account for that. Uh, so getting your timing right. So here we're, we're we're rolling, we're pretending we're doing a roll race here. Okay, 40, you're getting up into 5,000 RPM, and people are okay with that. Uh, and this car pulls hard, you know, it makes peak power at 7,500, or, you know, 7,000 RPM, so um, that's probably okay. I don't like it so much because you're shifting so soon, uh, but 40 in third gear is 3,000, so that's on the very low end of that, it's on the very low end of you know where the power starts to come in so it might you might not get quite the punch you're looking for when you take off let's see one two three yeah it's just a little too slow 
Maybe you tell them 30 roll. Let's see a 30 in second gear. Let's see where, where that puts us. Now shift. 30 is at 4,000. That's probably perfect. Let's do a 30. Let's do a 30 roll. One, two, three. Actually, this car shifts a little bit faster than I expected. I don't usually look down. I just kind of do it by sound and feel. I hit it right at about 6,900 RPM there, and it shifted by 71. So that was pretty... That was a pretty good shift. Uh, but see, you get the idea. You want to just mess around, play around on your car, uh, figure out where you can, what, what type of roll you can do where it's going to uh, put your RPM right at about 4,000. I think that's probably optimal. Again, five is okay because the car is making good power at that point, so a 40 roll is probably fine. It's really screaming at that point, but, and you're going to shift relatively quickly uh, as soon as you start. So it just depends on if you're, if you're wanting to shift right away uh, or if you want to try to wind it out but again it really kind of depends on what you agree on you know if you're going to do a 40 roll you, we, we found that you don't want to start in third because you're going to be too low um, maybe just suggest a 30 roll right 50 is already fast uh, but this car the the vq uh, likes that high rpm high mile an hour racing that's kind of where it that's where it loves to be it's its ideal scenario so if you're racing those stock of course the stock 3.0 t guys non-red sport whatever race them if you want who gives a shit uh, but i mean I, I come from a generation where you just race whatever if there's not a whole there's not there wasn't like all this internet research first let me ask my buddy hey oh well can i beat this can i beat that no you just you just lined up even if you knew you were probably going to get your ass whooped, as long as you weren't betting a bunch of money, uh, it's just fun to line up against somebody else and race them. That, that's my opinion. So I, I, when I see that those messages on the Facebook groups or whatever, hey, can I, can I beat this person? Or my buddy drives this and this, and he thinks he can beat me. What do you think? Just line them up. Just run them, for crying out loud. Anyway, I, anyway, I forgot what I was even talking about. But, oh, yeah, if you're, if you're racing the 3.0T, guys, we know that those turbos perform uh, at their fullest potential, you know, between like 3,500 and 5,500 RPM, 6,000 RPM, they start to, they start to struggle. That's where the VQ loves to be. So there's a, there's a slight advantage because that's where the VQ is going to shine against the, the stock 3.0 T. If you're going from a dig, just hope you get grip and hope you hit your shifts. You time your shifts just right um, because they have a lot more torque, you know, low end. Uh, so they might jump out ahead of you off the line. And that's, um, then in that case too, make sure you have enough room to reel them in. If you're in a, on a quarter mile track and you get a good start, um, you might be able to reel them in and, and finish them before you cross the line. Uh, I, there, people fight so much back and forth of which platform is better, but stock versus stock, the 3.7 and the 3.0T, the non-red sport, you know, 400, the regular 300 horsepower 3.0 T they are so closely matched it's not, it's not a joke um, people will talk about how many videos of the 3.0 T beating 3.7s that they've seen but there's just as many on the other side as well and, and it's true and it's not a dig against the 3.0 or uh, you know saying the 3.7 is superior the reality is that they're just so closely matched that it really would be a fun race stock versus stock um, Neither of them are very fast, don't get me wrong, but again, they're big, nearly 4,000 pound luxury sport cars. They're not meant to be, you know, neck snappers, but they're so evenly matched that it really would come down to grip, um, you know, getting your shifts timed right if you're not allowing the car to shift on its own, um, and just, you know, hoping your car is running as efficiently and effectively as it can on that particular day uh, if it's nice and cool and dry the 3.0 t is going to be is going to be tough to nose out at, on a quarter mile track you know the turbos love that cold cold air um, and if they can hook they might get out in front of you but again the the higher mile per hour the higher rpm range this is that's where the vq 37 shines it'd just be nice to see more more of them run against one another in stock form. So we could really not necessarily settle the argument, but so we could get some more, more complete data. 
don't know if this video is of interest to uh, anyone, but we're back in the garage. I'm running out of battery, so it's a good thing. Just to kind of reiterate, if you're in the mountains, don't go crazy shifting. In previous mountain run videos, you could see it. Check out my Tale of the Dragon video. I'll put a card across the top if I can remember. But there's no need to shift a lot. Stay in that in that optimal power range, so between 3,000, 5,000 RPM, something like that, um, you know, going through the corners. Don't upshift into fourth gear if you're in the mountains because the chances that you're going 100 miles an hour are pretty slim. Uh, so second and third gear are going to be your friend. Again, if you're in those wild, long, sweeping canyon roads of California, uh, you might get into that fourth gear range if you're going crazy on a closed course. But again, if there's hairpin turns, wind out second gear, you might tap third gear for 100 feet or so, uh, and then have to go back down to second. So sometimes in, on certain roads, I've found it more efficient or more effective just to stay in second gear and not, even though I could probably get another 10 or 11, 12 mile per hour out of third gear into the corner, because I have to shift back down to second so quickly, I found it better just to wind out second and not have to downshift and just, you know, be able to slow down enough into those corners that I'm already in second gear, uh, which is right in my power band to pull out of that corner and, and maintain the speed. So you just kind of have to play around with the car and go through different scenarios and see what works for you. But just keep in mind that you don't have to shift constantly. You're, you're finding the two gears that you go back and forth between uh, and determine whether or not you actually have to do that much back and forth and, and just stay in the gear that makes sense. Uh, you don't want to burn up the transmission any more than you have to. And um, that's just going to ensure longevity, but it's also going to ensure that you get you know, a more effective lap uh, through those hills and turns. Uh, in straight lines, Make sure you time your shift, and that just takes practice if you're using the paddle shifters. Again, there's a little bit of a delay, and every car has a little bit different delay, but this car doesn't, as you saw, it doesn't really have that much of a delay. It's maybe 200 RPM or something like that. So just, again, practice makes better. Um, so if you, you know, your car makes power all the way to 7,500, shift at 7,000, 7,200. Just make sure you're not tapping rev limiter because, again, that's going to kill momentum. Just play around with the gears um, and look at where the RPM is at and what mile per hour you're at and think about who you're racing. Make sure you do it in Mexico on a closed course, of course. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the continued support. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.